Today I'm going to show you the 7 best features available in DaVinci Resolve Studio. Let's get started. Magic Mask Without exaggeration, this is one of the best features of DaVinci Resolve Studio. And now you'll see why. To use Magic Mask, first we need to access its specific menu by clicking on the Magic Mask icon. Once inside, click on the selector icon with a plus symbol. Next, left-click on the person or object in your video that you want to create the Magic Mask for. Use this blue line to make your selection. The more you select, the better, as DaVinci Resolve will understand where you want to create the mask. Great! To view the mask we've created, click on the Toggle Mask Overlay icon, and the mask will be highlighted in red. If you notice that the Magic Mask has selected parts of the background as if they were part of the person, to fix this, select the selector with the minus symbol. Now, simply select the parts you don't want, the red highlighted background areas. Finally, to make the person's selection perfect, I recommend activating the better mode instead of the faster mode. This way, the magic mask selection of the person will be much more precise. As we can see, it's much improved now. Fantastic! We've selected the person in the video. Now we need to track the mask's motion. Click on this icon with two arrows. DaVinci Resolve will track the mask on the person throughout the entire video. The magic mask is now completely finished, and you can deactivate the toggle mask overlay icon so that it no longer appears in red. Perfect. You might be wondering, what's next? What do I do with this mask? The answer is very simple. Anything you can think of. Let's start with the basics. Any changes you make now will only affect our selection. As we can see, it's only affecting the person where we've created the magic mask. Would you like the person black and white and the background in color? Easy. Would you like to have the background in black and white and the person in color? Just invert the selection of our magic mask by clicking the invert icon and you're done. You can place text behind the mask, remove the background from a video, or even create clones. Need to change the color of a specific element in your video? Great! The possibilities are endless, and you can use them to create special effects. You're going to love this. Let's say we have a video of two kids playing, right? Create a magic mask for the kid on the right, just as we did before. Now, let's remove the video's background. Right-click on the Nodes panel, select the Add Alpha Output option, connect your magic mask node to the alpha output you've just created. And voila, you have your video without a background. Now that we have a mask for the kid playing with a boat, we can place it in another video. When I say the possibilities are endless, I mean it. And get ready, because this is just the first feature in this video. Let's continue. Optical Flow. If you liked the previous feature, this one is equally impressive. Do you want to apply slow motion to any video, regardless of whether it was recorded at 24, 25, or 30 FPS? If we right-click on the clip and reduce its speed, for example, to 25%, the video, due to insufficient frames, will play in a choppy manner. You'll notice that the video isn't playing smoothly, and you don't achieve that smooth, slow-motion effect. But don't worry. In DaVinci Resolve Studio, we can achieve slow motion in any video. Just click on the clip and go to the Inspector panel, expand the Retime and Scaling menu, click on the Retime Process option, and select Optical Flow. In the Mode Estimation section, if your computer isn't very powerful, I recommend using the Enhanced Better mode. But if you want the best results, the ideal option is Speed Warp. In this mode, you'll achieve perfect slow motion, but keep in mind that it consumes a lot of computer resources. I recommend exporting the videos to play them smoothly or enabling the render cache function. Wait for the bar above the timeline to turn blue, and you can then view the video correctly. As you can see, the result is completely smooth slow motion. It's incredible to be able to do this with any of your videos. The optical flow feature not only allows you to achieve a slow motion effect, but also super slow motion. Imagine you have a video already recorded in slow motion, like the example in this video. If we apply optical flow to it, we can achieve an even slower motion. As you can see, it's truly amazing. A super slow and entirely smooth motion. 
making this person appear to float in the air for a long time. Super Scale If you're working with videos at a low resolution or lower than your project's resolution, this feature is perfect for increasing the resolution of those videos. For example, here we have a video with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. If you want to increase the resolution and sharpness of this video, the first thing to do is increase the timeline resolution. Let's increase it to 3840 by 2160, which is 4K. Okay, once we have our timeline set to 4K resolution, select the 1080p video clip. Then go to the inspector menu and enable the super scale option. When you activate it, you'll see an increase in video sharpness. I'll zoom in a bit so you can appreciate it better. There are different modes for upscaling our video, but I recommend selecting the Times 2 Enhanced mode as it provides the best results. You can adjust sharpness and noise reduction according to your preferences. Right now, for my taste, the sharpness effect is quite exaggerated, so I'll decrease it to 250 and also reduce the noise reduction adjustment. Perfect. I'll zoom in on this building here so you can clearly see the difference when the super scale feature is enabled. Okay, I'll turn it off and then back on. Off, on. Next function. This is another one of those tools that will save you hours of work. If you've finished videos and need to separate them into scenes for re-editing or exporting individual shots from that video, you're going to love this feature. Select the video clip and go to the Timeline tab. Look for the Detect Scene Cut feature. Now DaVinci Resolve will analyze your entire video in just a few sections and split it into scenes. Once it's done, you'll have your video with all the individual shots, and believe me, it does a very good job. It doesn't create weird cuts in the scenes or anything like that. Next feature. This feature will save you a lot of time, especially when creating content for social media platforms like Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube Shorts. Smart reframing. Imagine you have several horizontally recorded videos, and when you switch to the vertical format, important elements of the video are out of frame. In theory, you should adjust each video one by one to fit the vertical format correctly. That's where the smart reframing feature comes in, allowing you to do this automatically. It's straightforward. Select all the clips on the timeline that you want to reframe. Then go to the inspector panel. In the transform section, expand the smart reframe function. Now, simply click on Reframe, and you'll have your video perfectly reframed in the vertical format for uploading to social media. As you can see, the point of interest in the video now appears correctly throughout the video, a significant improvement from what we had before. 3D Camera Tracking The 3D Camera Tracker function allows you to recreate the camera's movement within a scene. This enables you to add 3D elements or visual effects that match the original camera's motion. Once inside the Fusion module, look for and add the Camera Tracker tool. Select the Camera Tracker node and ensure it's properly connected. Next, go to the Inspector panel and activate the Preview Auto Track Locations and Bi-Directional Tracking options to track the motion throughout the video. Before you start tracking, Consider the Detection Threshold and Minimum Feature Separation options. You can adjust the minimum separation to increase or decrease the distance between tracking points. These green points can be seen in your viewer. You can also adjust the detection level to increase or decrease the tracker's sensitivity. These options will help you achieve better motion tracking. If you don't get good results with the default settings, you can experiment by adjusting these two parameters. With that in mind, select Auto Track to perform motion tracking on your video. Next, go to the Solve tab and click on the Solve button. DaVinci Resolve will analyze the tracking you've just done and provide various data. Pay attention to the average solve error value. For optimal camera tracking, this value should be less than 1. In my case, I have 0.47, which means my camera tracking is correct. If you want to reduce this figure, you can decrease the Maximum Track Error option. By clicking Delete, 
you will remove the tracking points from your video that may be incorrect and affecting the camera tracking. Now when you click Solve again, you'll notice that the average solve error value decreases to 0.33, which is much better. Great, you're done. Let's export the motion tracking. Click on the Export tab, and before exporting, change the Aligned mode to Unaligned. Then, select the tracking points where you want to position your text. Your text will follow the same motion as the points you select. For example, I want to place the text here and have it follow the same movement as this dome. Now select the tracking points in the dome area by left-clicking on them, and they will turn yellow. With the points selected, click on Set from Selection. Finally, re-enable the Aligned mode that you changed earlier, and you can now export your motion tracking. When you export it, you'll see several nodes, but you only need the top three nodes. You can safely delete the Point Cloud 3D and Ground Plane nodes as they are not necessary. As I mentioned, you only need these three nodes connected as follows. The Media In 1 input node, connected to the three nodes, and finally connected to the Media Out 1 output node. Now adding any text and having it follow the video's motion is super easy. Click on the Text 3D icon to create a text node. Connect the text node to the Merge 3D node, and then type the text you want. You can change the font, color, size, and more. To position the text correctly, go to the Transform tab and adjust the X and Y axis. Your text will now perfectly follow the camera's motion in the video. Cool, right? Let's move on to the next feature. Depth Map. With this tool, you can achieve results very similar to Magic Mask. You'll be able to remove the background from any video, blur the background to create a bokeh effect, place titles behind people or objects, assist in creating special effects, and much more. The advantage over Magic Mask is that with the Depth Map function, you can select multiple elements in the video based on their depth, meaning how close or far they are from the camera. You can vary the selection intensity depending on the element's distance in the video. In areas that are completely white, the selection is at 100%, and in gray areas, the selection will be less. For example, you can completely select the background and choose to select the closer elements to a lesser degree. This way, if you apply a blur effect, color correction, or changes in lighting, it will affect areas that are white at 100%, and have a lesser impact on gray areas. You have significant flexibility in selecting and retouching parts of your video. If you're interested in learning more about this feature, I have a tutorial on depth map in my channel members. The tutorial will be released soon for everyone. That's all for today. I hope you've enjoyed these seven features of DaVinci Resolve Studio. See you in the next video.